Hi, I'm Jessica Stanton, and I'd like to share with you some work that my colleagues and I conducted recently to answer some questions we had about combining static and dynamic variables and species distribution models under climate change. Species distribution models, also known as ecological niche models, were initially developed as single time-step snapshots of how species are distributed in the world or on a landscape. Increasingly, distribution models have been applied to assess the potential impacts of future climate change, adding the additional dimension of time to the approach. Adding this dimension of time requires that some additional thought and care be given to the selection of predictor variables and how those variables are used in these models. Most distribution models share a common general approach. Known species occurrence locations are identified on a landscape. The landscape or study area is then divided into grid cells. A model can now be constructed which uses either occupied cells alone or both the occupied and unoccupied cells as the dependent variable and a set of environmental conditions as the independent variables to determine the predicted suitability of each location in the landscape. The suitability of the landscape can be predicted into the future under changed environmental conditions, including scenarios of change in climate. Distribution models that use only climate variables to predict future species distributions are fairly straightforward when trying to predict where the bioclimate envelope will be under various climate projections. However, we know that species occurrences often depend on many factors aside from climate alone such as soil type, vegetation cover, and land use. All of these variables change through time, but at very different rates, meaning that the correlations, dependencies, and interactions between variables may not remain as we find them at the present time. Appreciable changes in climate are forecasted to occur over the duration of the present century, making climatic predictor variables in distribution models what we call dynamic variables. Whereas the processes defining soil characteristics change over geologic timescales, therefore it's reasonable to consider predictor variables related to soil to be static or unchanging over the next 50 to 100 years in distribution models. In other cases, we expect that there will be changes, yet future scenarios are not available or are highly uncertain. This is particularly relevant for remotely sensed variables such as land cover classifications and measures of productivity. Predicting changes in land cover is difficult because land use patterns result from many factors including physical properties of the environment, resource demand, human population density, available technology, in addition to an array of laws, policies, mores, and attitudes of people towards their physical environment. These factors are ever-changing and can cause existing trends and patterns of land use to shift rapidly and sometimes in unexpected ways. In our paper, we explore methods for using both static and dynamic variables in species distribution modeling. What we wanted to know was if it was better to include the static variables directly in the model along with the dynamic variables, start with a climate only model, and use the static variables as a mask to exclude areas that are known to be unsuitable due to non-climatic factors, or perhaps it's best to exclude static variables from the model altogether and simply rely on bioclimate envelope type predictions. In order to evaluate these three different approaches to handling both dynamic and static variables in a predictive distribution model as realistically as possible, we created simulated species to evaluate the different modeling approaches against the simulated true distribution. One aspect we were particularly interested in was the best way to handle static and dynamic variables when they might be interacting to determine habitat suitability. For example, for the simulated species on the left, precipitation and soil type interact so that locations on porous soils need a higher level of precipitation in order to be suitable. The suitability function for the species on the right is similar in all aspects except that soil type and precipitation act independently to determine the habitat suitability. After generating the true suitability functions for each of our simulated species, we sampled the habitat maps to generate random samples of occurrences. We then constructed models from the sampled occurrence locations using the program MaxSent. 
We then projected the models to future climate predictions. We compared the discrimination ability of the model habitat by calculating the area under the receiver operator characteristic curve, or AUC value. As a measure of model calibration, we calculated the correlation coefficient between modeled and true habitat suitability maps for each time step. We found that models where the static variables were included along with the dynamic variables performed better or at least no worse than either masking or excluding static variables. The difference in predictive ability was most pronounced when there is an interaction between a static variable, in this case soil type, and the dynamic variable or precipitation. We also found that for variables such as land use, if such variables affect species distributions, including them in the model is better than excluding them, even though this may mean making the unrealistic assumption that the variable will not change in the future.